Have you ever shot a time lapse over like one year to document the progression of, for example, a construction site? If so, you know that editing those 10,000s of images down to a nice and smooth clip, which really documents that progress, can be a challenging task. Today, I'm going to show you how to do this easily with LR time lapse. Let's get started. Often in such cases, the images are not necessarily in order. Often they are scattered around in different folders. So the first thing that I would do in such a case is use the LR time lapse importer and import from the original folder, which I would keep untouched because then I can just go back to those original files at any time in the future. By the way, thank you to other time lapse user Tor Bjorn that let me use his sequence that he shot, I guess, somewhere in Norway. So the importer will grab all the images of all those folders here. And also I would like to rename them to year, month and day prefix here, just to make sure that we have the right order also alphabetically later of the images. So now let's find a destination folder. I will put them here next to the original files, call them Fjord Long Term. So now let's import those files. Of course, it's not mandatory to use that importer for this, but it's a very convenient way to get everything sorted. And also we have a copy of those files. Now that the importer ended, we can close it and open the sequence in the main window of LR time lapse. Now that the sequence has been loaded, we can play it back. And we see that, of course, it has lots of changes. The days pass by, different contrasts, different luminosity, different colors, and so on. It's a JPEG sequence. It has been shot with a 30 seconds interval over a course of nearly two years. So there's a lot going on. And this is the luminosity curve. In this case here, it just goes up and down a lot. And we are going to use this, for example, to filter images. So let's just switch to the filter panel. Since this is a JPEG sequence, we are on the basic workflow here. Let's switch to the visual workflow and go to the filter panel. Don't worry, we are going to convert the JPEGs to DNG later in order to be able to use the visual deflicker and so on. But for now, let's just stay with those JPEGs because uh, it will be just quicker to not have to convert 10,000 images to DNG. Now you can see we have two additional curves here. The blue one is the luminosity curve that we already had before. The pink one is for use. This is the color difference and the orange one is for contrasts. You can turn on and off every of these curves just by clicking here on this small little icon with the curve. If you want to turn all curves off for a moment, you can also click here. So now we have different filter tools and the challenge is to combine them in a way that at the end we will only have a smooth sequence. We instantly see is that we have a couple of images that are really, really dark, for example here, and we would like to remove those. So let's just filter for luminosity, but not the whole image. We are going to set a reference area to the sky that will allow us to remove those images where the sky is black. And the new curve will only show this area. And here you can already see that are a couple of images with very low luminosity in that area. Let's turn off the other two filters for now. These images here and these images here are the dark ones. It's also interesting to see that this is the winter season where we really have those dark images and here's the next winter season. So now let's use the luminance filter. As soon as you drag the smoothing filter up here, you will get another curve, which will draw a smooth version of this luminosity curve. And with this smoothing slider, you can tell how smooth this reference will be. And now we have the bandwidth here, which we can use to filter out images that have a very high and a very low luminosity. So you further you increase the bandwidth, the 
closer the images that will be kept have to be on this curve. In this case, I will not remove the bright images. I will leave the bright images alone. To do so, I remove the tick from this infinity sign, which allows me to detach the sliders and leave all the bright images like they are and only remove the dark ones. Okay, let's play back. When you hit playback, even before clicking on filter, and you will play back only the images that would remain in the sequence after filtering. And you can see all of those dark sky images are gone now. And this means we can click on filter images. And what filter images actually does is it will move those files to another folder which is called with the suffix removed. So if I click on yes, it will just move the unwanted images to this long-term removed folder here, which would allow us to restore the original sequence later just by moving those images back. Okay, let's get rid of the reference area on the sky. Next thing I would like to do is deal with the contrasts to get rid of the very low contrast images like this one here. Again, we can use a reference area to the sky because if we have this kind of foggy days, then of course we will have a very, very low contrast on the sky. And to see the contrast, now I will enable the contrast curve and disable the luminance curve. Here we set a smoothing. So for this filtering now, I'm going to use the constant check mark here. It will give me a straight line as a reference, which I can then move with this slider up and down. And this allows me much better to just isolate the areas with the very low contrast. And again, to do so, to remove only the low contrasts, let's just unlink the two bandwidth sliders and drag up the left one, which will just remove the images with a very low contrast. Let's play it back. Still, what we see, we sometimes have those shadows coming in here from the left. And I would like to remove that in the next step. But for now, let's just filter those images out. So you might have guessed it to remove those areas where the shadows come in here. Let's set a reference area to there. And then just remove the very dark images. This time I work with the smoothing. And again, I will remove only from the left. Okay, let's filter. Playback. Okay, another filter to make everything even smoother would be the time filter. The time span filter is here. For example, you could use it to check out if we have images from Saturday and Sunday, for example, days where usually there would be no construction work. So just remove those check marks, hit OK and see what LR Timelapse tells you, how many images it would filter, it would remove none, so there are no images on Saturdays on Sunday. But we could increase the starting time. So for example, if we start at uh, 2 p.m. only with our filtering, which is 14, then we will remove additional 1,267 images. And let's play that back. That will, of course, also remove the morning images, which uh, gave us those shadows here in this area. As you can see, this already looks much more even now if we remove the early images. So maybe we can do the same with uh, some late images. And let's just get rid of the late images also and keep only the images from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. We have sufficient images and that's important when you shoot this kind of long-term time-lapse that you just have enough images to do that clever type of filtering later. We would remove another additional 2750, which is totally fine and stay with only 470 images, which I will do now.
So all the removed images now are here in long term removed and the keepers are here in our long term. Let's remove the reference area by double clicking in the preview again. And you can already see with the luminance curve, it looks much better than it did before. And when we play back this now, it already looks nice way from perfect but much better. Now let's do one last filtering pass with no reference area set, just with the normal smoothing of the curve and a band width from top and bottom to just remove the very bright and very dark images. So now you can always see here how many images would be removed. So this would be only 23. Let's check out the other curves. Um, for example, here the U curve still has some bumps. I wouldn't remove too much of those, just the extreme positions. And let's do the same for the contrast curve, set some smoothing. Okay, so now we still have 385 images left, and that's fine. Now I would like to apply some basic editing and do the visual deflicker. In order to do so, because we cannot do this on JPEG images, I will bring the sequence to Lightroom and convert this residual sequence to DNG. Now we bring the sequence to Lightroom Classic. Make sure that add is selected as usual, then import. Now make sure that the filter is set to LR Timelapse full sequence, then select all images and go to library convert photos to dng make sure that delete originals after successful conversion is checked and hit ok now back in lr time lapse let's not load the new dng folder so i will just change folders here and then reload this folder to make sure that lr time lapse loads the dng files now this would be the regular workflow just use the keyframes wizard but I will only use one keyframe in this case and save the images. The only thing I would like to edit on this keyframe is just to take out a little bit of contrast. And I won't even do that in Lightroom. I will do it directly here in LR Timelapse just by dragging down the highlights a little bit and increasing the shadows. So this will make everything look a little bit more flat. And we will re-add this contrast later then in the video editor, as you will see. Okay, let's make the auto transition to populate that edit. And now we are going to wait for the visual previews and then do the visual deflicker. In this case, I will not set a specific reference area for the deflicker. I will just use a big reference here in the center of the image, which will not change much on the reference that we are going to use. Then just activate the visual deflicker, let the curve just follow a little bit, and then let's make like five passes of visual deflicker to get a nice and smooth curve. As you can see from the pink curve, the flicker worked perfectly, technically, because of course, these images still have different contrasts, which cannot just be eliminated by deflickering. Now we are going to fix these residual changes in contrast and make a more pleasant video to watch. And we are going to do this by doing the export and render. I'm doing that internally here from our timelapse, but you could also bring the sequence to Lightroom and do the export from there. Now you can set your video settings, but what's important, let's just bring up the LRT motion blur all the way here to 20, for example. Of course, you can experiment with different settings. I will use the maximum setting here. So let's export and render. So let's have a look at the result. As you can see, this already looks quite nice. Still lacks a little bit of contrast, but that's because the way that I edited the keyframes but what's worse is we have that shaking of the camera, which of course also doesn't play well with the motion blurs. In order to fix this, I'm going to use DaVinci Resolve. You can even use the free version to stabilize the footage and also to re-add the motion blur 
after doing that. In order to import that sequence into DaVinci Resolve as a sequence and not as single stills, we need to go to the media pool, then hit on the three dots here and then go to frame display mode and make sure that is set to sequence. And now we can just open our finder here and drag the LRT Fjord long term to the media pool, which will import it as a image sequence. Now we can do right click, add into media pool, and then right click, create new timeline using selected clips. So then you're going to use this timeline to open it in the edit module. Now I'll just go to stabilization here and click on stabilize and then on camera lock in order to get that locked camera. And when I play it back, the stabilization will be there. Next step would be to re-app that motion blur, which is like a frame blending. You can do that in DaVinci Resolve uh, quite easily. Go to open effects here on the left to filters and all the way down here we have the motion trails filter. So let's drag that to the sequence, select it on the right. Now you have the settings for the motion trails and then you can decide how long this motion trails will be. So let's just play this back. And you can see now we have a smooth fading and a quite a nice look of the final sequence. But before we render it out now, let's just re-add the contrast that we decreased earlier when editing the keyframes. So I'm going to the color module here in DaVinci Resolve and check out this waveform. This is crucial for what you're going to edit. Now we have those color wheels, basically lift is uh, blacks, gamma is the midtones, gain is the lights. So just let's bring back the blacks a little bit to the left so that we fill the lower part of the waveform. And let's uh, raise the gain a little bit here. And so this already will add a nice contrast. If you increase gamma, you will increase the midtones. You could also go here and check out the curve and do a little bit of an S-curve uh, processing to add even some more contrast. Also increases the color saturation a little bit. So then now let's go and export the sequence. I'm, I added it to render queue and then I will render the sequence, which in my opinion looks quite good and much better than what we had before because it really allows the viewer to focus on the construction that is going on. And we have much less distraction from all the other stuff going on, like changing contrast, changing seasons and whatever. I hope that this tutorial was valuable to you. If so, please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell, you know that. See you soon with more in-depth tutorials for our time-lapse. Happy time-lapsing. Bye-bye.